Hello and welcome to the Charles to be Champion podcast, a podcast brought to you by Pinnacle Esports. We're here to discuss with you the very best of esports action from across the globe. And with the next few weeks, we'll be focusing on the Pinnacle Cup, a global CSGO event which has seen 32 teams and some of the biggest names in esports compete for their share of $100,000 for the coveted title of Pinnacle Cup Champion. So let's get into it. Of course, I am Kremer, or Kremer 3 is when I go by casting. I'm joined by the wonderful Mohan and Adam Booth, a kind of betting extraordinaire when it comes to odds. And hopefully he'll be able to give us some kind of internal sights when it comes to these games ahead. And yeah, yeah we've seen some incredible round of 16 games. Yeah, they were just unbelievable. And now we move to a quarter final. And honestly, these don't look, these, I think every single game is going to be pretty, you know, even. I can see every single one going to three maps. How are you guys feeling about it? I, I agree. I think um, to super high level before we get specific, I guess like overall, I'm I'm with that as well. Uh, I, like NIP coming up and Havu being where they are. Spirit and Amiga is like an interesting one because like, I, I don't know. I'm not huge on Amiga, but they've beat Spirit like two out of the last four times they played. And then I, I really think Wizlaw Krakow is a quite a slept on roster. I actually think they play play pretty well. So yeah, pretty much every team here is is uh, is interesting. Yeah, I was so pleased to see who uh, Pinnacle uh, got for those uh, to, to bring into the, to, to the quarterfinals on the, the invite side. Um, this is ex- exactly what we were kind of uh, alluding to, hoping we'd see, which is where does Havu endpoint, um, specifically those two we mentioned last uh, on the last one, uh, match up against your gatekeepers to the, the next level mm. and having... Katowice champions having big clan NIP who recently just we'll get into them, but all of a sudden four map win streak, a four series win streak, and uh, and Team Spirit. I mean they, they were favorites against Gambit, um, so and they were also semi finalists. So I am very very pleased that not only are these class teams, but they're relevant right now. Um, so yeah, it'll be a lot of fun to break down uh, where Pinnacles put the prices. For the for this weekend and uh, how these these couple will match up. It was another quick generalized kind of statement before we delve into you know, every individual matchup. Do you guys have uh, any teams that you think are going to progress outside of the invited quarterfinal team teams? Do you think any teams that have kind of slogged their way through the Swiss stage are going to be able to make it through, or are you fairly set in stone that the kind of invited teams are going to be the ones battling out for that final? Uh, in this in this quarterfinal bracket, like any upsets coming from the uh, mm. yeah coming from the groups, I, I th- uh, that's that's an interesting question. I, I think um, I think I think I guess Namiga could potentially like they have a good chance, I guess, of of winning this next game. I don't I don't I, I feel like they won't. I feel like Spirit will win, but I guess of all of these games, they probably got uh, a better chance, if not the best chance, of an actual upset. Mm. Yeah, they 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 know their opponent a little bit better. I would say than some of the others maybe do. Again, I think you even mentioned it on the last one, Mohan, which is we don't know always behind the scenes who's scrimming who, right? And uh, so so they might play each other regularly on a certain map and then pull out something different that no better analyst could could expect. Um, as far as I mean. I prefer we, we got into the discussion of doing the match head to heads first, and then maybe I'll, I'll give you my uh, my dark horse to, to get through. Krem. Does, that, does that sound good? Yeah, quite. Well, I want to hear, I mean, hear your guys' thoughts first before I, before, before I weigh in. But uh, on the out, on the outset, I would say I mean Gambit's just in prime form. Mm-hmm. I, I would slate them as the the front runners to still take the tournament. But um, but yeah, let's let's get into the head to heads. Sure. I mean, we'll we'll go from kind of top down. So I think Nip Havu is going to be our first game of the quarterfinals. And I see Havu, last time we spoke, they were on, I think, 17 18 series win streak. Since then, they've actually had some upsets. They lost to uh, Helsinki Reds, which is a map they really shouldn't be losing. Granted, it was the best of one, but the reality is to be losing to a team like that isn't something you should be proud of. And they also lost to um, Ents. Ents. And with Havu and Ents both having a kind of rivalry as that rank one team of Finland, the fact they lost there again is going to be a bit of a kick to the teeth. Since then, they have recovered with a few series wins. Whether or not they can beat Nip, I'm kind of on the fence. But Mohan, what do you think? Yeah, I think that was touched on last time as well. It was like coming into ends is like we look at Habu's win streak and like they beat what's in front of them, which is all they had to do. Mm-hmm. But uh, mm-hmm. of course, there weren't too many. There weren't too many indicators that they could pull off a bigger upset versus like 
a more established team. And um, I didn't think that they would necessarily lose to Ants. I think they could have, you know, they could have, Ants were maybe on the decline and new team and Havu were on their way up. But uh, I, I, I think, I don't think anybody expected Ants to be as good as they are as good as they are. I think Snappy's calling is working really well and they, um, and, and Spinks especially has been set up like so well to succeed. Lots of clutches, lots of very high average, like consistent performances. So they were a tough team to beat and, um, Havu didn't win there. I'm not sure if that necessarily means that they'll lose to NIP just cause, um, NIP are getting better, but they're also not like a team. You just, you're just not going to trust them hundred percent. Um, and I, I think, the main reason for me with with uh, NIP is that I think Knock is supposed to be the most. I, I'd say Knock is supposed to be the most impactful player on the team, and the, the reason I say that is because he is as as the opper and also just a, a player who has like really really big turn. He has big uh, he has big matches that we look back on in his in his history, and we also look at this kind of streaky history and say like, right now he's playing really well. And mm. when he's not, the team is losing, and he'll he'll just go red for like full periods at a time. So I think right now, Knock is playing the level he's supposed to be, and um, NIP are starting to win like a much higher frequency of their matches. For some reason, he ends up playing worse versus like worse teams. We look at these, especially in the last like ten or so series, they they've won. Um, they got a map G two. They got a map off G two. They beat Ents. They beat Phase 2-0. They beat Mouse Sports 2-1. They beat Vitality uh, 2-0. All these series, Knock played pretty much like really well um, almost every single game. Right before that, they lose to AGO. Um, they lost to Virtus Pro, got stomped by Virtus Pro. Knock was had one of his mm. worst series in recent memory. And then the same thing against Furia. He goes red, they lose. Um, so there's just such a high correlation between Knock's performances and when they win. Um, and he's doing well now. Yeah, no, the, the um, I I've noticed that correlation as well, um, and and also how going back to what we were talking about uh, two two weeks ago, um, it would have just been too perfect of a storyline to have Havu as the hot underdog coming in and Nip as the overpriced favorite, and just to take an easy side to Havu. Now all of a sudden Havu has a couple, you know, they still have a number of two O's in there, but you know we saw them against Ants. Um, and all of a sudden, Nip, I mean, that group B through ESL Pro League, that, that was impressive. Coming into top of mm. that group, um, when you talk about all of the talent, and I mean, there's been a lot of roster shuffling in, in that time, so it's not a really solid uh, 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 cohort, but um, it, it, you know, Nip's four, four match win streak now puts them a pinnacle pricing at, you know, just a touch under 60% to be. And honestly, that's it just eyeballing it. That makes a lot of sense here. Um, you say the caliber of opponent, they've they've kind of gone into an inferno mirage um pick slash comfort stage. Um, and yeah, you say Havu has you know 75% win streak or uh, win rate on six maps, so where's their weakness? But what are they gonna pick against Nip? What is Nip gonna assess as their weak map? Um, that's going to be a really interesting. I I can't make sense of this match in terms of picking a side either way. I think it is priced quite well here. Um, and the other thing is like Habu, Habu has converted over sixty percent of the T rounds on five of their mm. six matches. Only new. I mean, so I had saw plus one and a half yesterday against um, uh, uh, against Habu, and you saw saw it go out to an eight two lead on the T side of Nuke, looking great. All of a sudden, have we closed up the last five rounds, and then we get to see their T side go to work. And you know, eight if, if you're up eight two on T side nuke, you're you're gonna be. I don't know what the probability of closing that out is, but but you you would have to think even in the case of an underdog here, um, you've got to be pretty comfortable where you're sitting. Um, and I think they I think the final score was sixteen twelve. Yeah. But um, Abu has an excellent T side and and. Like Mohan said, Nip is just one of those streaky teams where we saw them come at, at, as soon as um, the, the year started. We saw them score some upsets, um, priced at like 2.7 and stuff. Then all of a sudden they go on like a four-format four losing streak or four-series losing streak. And then coming to Pro League, 
lose against G2, looking like that's going to that losing streak continue. Then we find out G2 is one of the better informed teams, even after Kenya's departure. And so Nick puts together, uh, you know, eight of the next 10 maps, uh, close out at the top. I think they ended up topping group B. So, um, no, I, I this this one is I 60 40. I, I think you can make arguments for either side, but I have a difficult time um, saying which map is going to be picked by either team and if they truly have an edge there. So um, at this point, it's a pass for me on uh, investigation. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I think given their success in kind of EPL, it's going to be hard to not say nip in this situation. Um, I think Havu. They have the they have the equipment, they have the players, and they have the experience to break into that tier one scene. Whether or now's their time to do so, we'll have to see. Honestly, did, 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 did you by chance see the two v five um, ants retake against Havu on Inferno though? Yeah, it was hard oh, to see, wasn't played. it? It was, it was, hard it was to watch. the round winning round, a two v five a set retake. Uh, yeah, Mohan, did you have to catch it either? No, I didn't see it. Oh, no, it it, was... so. Um, it was Krem, yeah. You you're the caster. You can give the play by play if you want. My my heart just goes out to goes out <laughs> to have it. It's like it's just you know when everything's perfect and then suddenly one thing goes wrong, then nothing goes wrong, then nothing goes wrong. It's yeah, like a landslide, was... <laughs> just like that. It was. I think it was um early early two picks on uh two players that just weren't traded. Happens fair enough, and then the remaining three just picked one at a time. And it was just like watching the round just slip between their fingers. Yeah, it, it was. Oh, it was, I did see this. Yeah, yeah, it was Alu, Alu, and Snappy. Alu yeah. Molly's um, mini pit, uh, where there's two low HP players, both not peeking. One burns to the Molly right off the bat. Yeah. Um, I forget who. I think it was Ariel was looping around to do the yeah, flank yeah. around Arch side. So he's but he's walking the whole way. So he has no. So it's a two versus uh, three on the site. Um, one gunfight, then oh, it was just you, uh, you watch it go one at played, a time. The pieces fall apart. Yeah, I'm just watching it back now as Jemmy to to come <laughs> around for more. And they were playing a mixture of like proactive as well as terrified, like yeah, mini top right. head down. But then you have like a rap coming around, like by time, by time, and then somebody yeah. dies in the side. He's like, I got to speed up now, and now you're not in the best <laughs> post my position. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Uh, just yeah. I, I was watching. I was thinking, just all peak, just. Oh, they can't even with the low HP. Just you're exactly right. It was it was the indecisiveness between what we're, what we're actually going to do. Um, yeah, it's that 001 percent. Not even it's probably even lower than that. That that you really think of. And that was how they won the match. So mm -hmm. um, that was quite quite. Interesting. Sorry to interrupt you, Kerm. I just had to. Get no, that. no, it's quite quite. I mean, that's a fair point. That was a disgustingly <laughs> strong retake. So again, it's like for having the fact they were able to get to the point where they are on match point they're able to get it to that third map you know they have the they have the potential to hit that tier one stage they just haven't done it yet and whether or not they've had enough time to kind of iron out their kinks since that loss to ends uh for this match against nip i doubt it i think that nip still have a bit of an advantage going into this simply out of experience and the fact that they you know they've been playing at some pretty damn good teams and showing that they are worth it um I think Havu definitely could if it's an upset, but that would more be Nip's loss than Havu's victory. And mm -hmm. I think that would be kind of Nip's kind of hallmark if they do fall. But oh yeah, it's going to be a Nip uh, prediction for me as well. I think, is, that, is that all of us saying Nip kind of progressing past Havu there? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I'm not sure I'm, I, I'm not sure. So, so just like that 2v5 is like the perfect example of like, okay, Havu are in a winning position. They played so well to get to that point. And then clearly the only difference is how much respect they have for their opponents. Yeah. Right? Like when it gets to those moments, then we lean towards nip, you know, this Havu nip, uh, yeah. Havu nip duel. But in terms of preparation, we expect Havu to like bring it, to be ready to win a couple of pistol rounds to like show that they were super prepared for NIP. But when it comes to the experience, then maybe, you know, we'll Havu choke again, basically. I mean, I hate to just throw that word around, but Sometimes that's what it boils down to. I'm sure Havu had a long conversation after the lost ends because there was so much buildup towards it. Like that Friday, they're going to play against yeah. ends after this huge win streak. I'm sure right after that, that was the first thing they talked about. Like, wow, we why did we respect them so much when we could have just, we literally had double OT waiting for us. We should have just peaked there. And that probably is going to have an influence on their, the next time they play a team like ends. And 
that might yeah. be NIP. Mm. I'll tell you what, let's move on to this next game though. Big and end point. I know that my I can feel like the GB flag suddenly rising behind me on my green screen. But, <laughs> <laughs> as I You're say, two fifths. So, it's a European Union. Yeah, that's right. Only English, now, English but... orc though. Well, how does <laughs> English orc? That. Yeah. Okay, right. <laughs> yeah, so you got, you so, got a CEO, surreal, and yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And so Max. we've got to cling to everything we can. Right? <laughs> All right, we don't have a big seat. <laughs> Let us have our victories. So someone, someone, big, I was, I, I was talking to somebody about somebody was like. Uh, what, who do you want to like get picked up by a big team? And I was like, Flamesy. And they're like, leave UKCS alone. I was like, first of all, he's not from UK. And second of all, yes. they don't even have the UK flag anymore. Sorry, man. <laughs> yeah. It's, I'm Indian. Um, so like, what are we at? Yeah. It was, it's still, it was still clinging to us. Sebo had all right. <laughs> it's chance. So yeah, yeah. Big end point. Um, kind of age old match. I think we've seen these teams play against each other a fair few times over the last year or so in whether it be qualifiers or kind of cups like much like this. Um I think big historically have come out on top. Endpoint though, you know, that two zero versus Copenhagen Flames was pretty convincing. You know, 16 12, 16 10. Um considering that that was on overpass as well, which is Copenhagen Flames kind of staple map, I actually think Endpoint have a pretty strong chance it. I think guaranteed gonna be a three mapper. Um whether it's enough to beat big, it's going to be a hard kind of dependency on the veto. But I think Endpoint have a chance. Granted, that is the most biased opinion I could possibly give. But yeah, I'm. I think the Endpoint have a chance. So End Endpoint was down 10-0 to Copenhagen Flames on map one. But they came back. They, they came back. They, they <laughs> came back. So I, I I tweeted out about this because yesterday was some high streaky Counter Strike yesterday morning. Yep. Um, and that was one of the matches. They down 10 0, come back. Um, then they go up, I think it was 10 1 on this on map two. So they basically won 95% of rounds from being down 10 0. Um, then, right after I tweeted that, Copenhagen Flames brought it all the way back to 10 10, I believe, on, on Inferno. And I was just thinking, I got to turn this off. This is just, it's a little bit too, too streaky, too ridiculous, these comebacks. Um, and then, as soon as I turned it off, and out, of course. Um, so I, yes, they, but they, they were priced as the favorite, right? So like, yeah. I, I do agree. They looked impressive for parts of that series. Um, but if, if you think, I, I just, I wasn't as convinced by that. Um, maybe that was also, <laughs> I mean, I was on the flames, so that, that goes into it. But um I, I probably underrate Endpoint a little bit, but I said on the previous episode of this podcast, um, I would put Endpoint against top 10 caliber in, in the, or the gatekeepers, I think it was, in the 20 to 25% range. And we've seen them open at Pinnacle at 27 against Big Clan. So, and, and you would say Big Clan of all the top 10 teams or gatekeeper teams, however you phrase it, mm. um, is probably one of the ones more on the decline. So I, I would say ballparking it, it, it's not too far off from, from where I thought, but I do think Endpoint is a little bit um, overrated, even though Big Clan has lost, what, four straights and they've won just five maps in their last 25 or something. I mean, they're really dipping. And their last match was against Renegades and uh, mm. they get 2 owed. Um, and again, they, they led on both of them, I think. I think they... They had they picked us, which is map two. I forget what map one was Inferno, which is Renegades pick. Um, and they, you know, Big Clan's in a good position. And we'd seen terrible T sides kind of from Renegades all throughout the, their group. They were far and away the worst uh, attacking side in, in that group. Um, and suddenly, maybe Big Clan just had, uh, resigned that, you know, they weren't going to perform well or the, they weren't going to progress. I forget their status going into that. If, they still had a statistical chance, but um, it, it was really an ugly loss. And I mean, Endpoint is not too far and away from Renegade. So I agree with you in the sense that if Big shows what they showed on, on CT side um, and then on T side on Dust, I think it was, absolutely, I, I can see Endpoint taking this. And, and we, we talked to the potential Flames and we talked to, you know, the, the, the names who are experienced on... Um, on endpoint and showing up absolutely this upset that, that's viable um i'm gonna work on this match a little bit more because either side of it you know 
going into a 1.3 on big clan who's on a very big dip um or endpoint who i i just don't know how much value that is at, at, at two to one three to one um so i'm going to just sort of reserve any recommendations on that for, for now but um that's where i can see it uh i'll tell you right now i'm i'm sure of it uh big have got big have just been big don't have that many red flags in terms of like individual performance Sirius is still pretty consistent and Terrace actually having a lot of good games I, I'm telling you right now that they're losing a lot of these matches. They're having a lot of rounds in their losses. A lot of these matches yeah. are coming down to Inferno. Uh, their Inferno used to be uh, core to their map pool. We look at their stats on Inferno now. Let's see. They're on a five map wins loss streak on Inferno, which is coming mm -hmm. up in most every single veto they play. And before that, they were winning everything versus much better teams. So... A couple of these are close to OT losses and, you know, a couple double digit losses, but Inferno is costing them a lot of these tournaments or a lot of these uh, best of threes and points. Uh, Inferno is on an uptrend. It's not versus quality competition in comparison, but it's probably good enough compared to what uh, big have lost to recently. I think um, this is kind of the map that defines the the series with, I think two things come into this for me is that endpoints are, on their way up, they're feeling confident and big are um, probably a bit confused as to why they're losing so much, especially when they have such a pedigree on like a lot of the maps that they've been playing. There's no like recent roster changes, like none of it probably makes sense to them at the moment. So I, I'd say that uh, that's the only reason I would say the endpoint have a chance. Also, you know, Mighty Max, again, he, he stands out as a player who might not be able to perform super at a super high level compared to some of the teams that they're they're playing against. Um, but big aren't full of superstars, uh, and, um, and the, the rest of them like crucial Robin surreal, they're all as uh, surreal, not, a, not quite as, uh, as sick as he was, I think the last week when we talked, but, uh, flames crucial and, and, and Robin are a super strong core at the moment and, um, all putting up very big numbers. So, uh, yeah, I think. They're kind of a special team. There's not many others you can compare them to with a player like mm. Mighty Max and then four others that can put up such big numbers. But um, they're all really, I think, punching above their weight at the moment. And yeah, big are probably lacking a bit of confidence right now. Do you want to give a prediction to it? Oh, I did all that without giving a prediction. Oh, that's cool. All right, I was I'll, really uh, impressed with that, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, nice. <laughs> that's tricky by me. Okay, I'll do it. I'll, get, I'll, I'll give this to end points as an upset. All right, all right. Yeah. I see. Adam, you've uh, you've uh, deterred it or deferred it for now. Um, you you yeah. want to give a prediction or? No, there's there's only one. Uh, <laughs> no, there's only one prediction. <laughs> I should have did that. I didn't I know you were allowed did. to do that. that was so I, awesome. I didn't realize that was an option either. But Adam's no, no mega lol. Always see the, the, the analysts on, on the you know the talent desk or the the intro desk. Um, you know, and I'm always like, that's one match that I would definitely want to avoid having to give a prediction. But they're always, you know, and then and then the, in yeah. recent years you've seen with the CS:GO desk, they they now track them just to put everybody's record up there, yeah. just so that everybody <laughs> in the world knows which analysts are to listen to and which not. You know, I always feel bad for the guys that you know, that's tough. But uh, I I um I'm reserving a opinion on uh, making a prediction for three of the four today. Uh, two of the four today so yeah sorry well i mean on the topic of you know close games and hard to predict spirit versus an amiga that is gonna be a tough one i yeah i think spirit they're showing really good form at the moment um yeah i think they're ranked seven in the world they've really kind of taken off i think over the last year or so um but as of Namiga, and I think Namiga, they're a bit later in or a bit earlier in their development stage than Spirit, who've had a chance to mature at the kind of tier one scene. Um, personally, um, I actually cast Namiga when they qualified uh, out of groups, and they were damn strong. Like, I am seriously impressed by them. Um, you yeah, know, they've got victories against uh, Forza, even though, yeah, that one's like quadruple overtime. It's still a victory. You know, they, they got here off the back of a 2 0 against Extreme, who granted aren't playing very well. They're still good players there's still a good team which they were able to be and honestly i see us being an upset for Namiga as well um i'll throw it to you guys what are your thoughts um, i'm going I, I think i look at the head-to-head -head i'm like oh this is spirit probably don't think this is free but mm. i i think that spirit are 
legitimately just all in, I think in every facet, a better team and really <laughs> are like, right. like, I mean, I, I think they really are. They, they are in the top 10, whereas Namiga, I don't think are close to that. Yeah. So I, I, it's just, but with the head to head and you know, how much Namiga knows specifically about spirit, that's where it gets a bit tricky. So, mm. you know, I could see it, but I, I, I think even though Namiga won last time, I think spirit, I'm going to, I'm going to pick spirit to win this time. Um, and there's nothing that's scaring me about their recent games that would make me want to say, uh, we've got to be worried about spirit. I think they are feeling pretty good. They're winning a lot of their games. I think they are getting a lot better since the last time they even played against Namiga. And, um, that'll be a, a whole new challenge for them. I, I actually, before coming into the show, I was thinking like, this is probably based on head to head, one of the more, more 50, 50 games. But now I think I'm honestly leaning, I'm leaning pretty heavily towards spirit. The pinnacle odds agree with you, Juan. It's 75-25 in favor of Spirit. Um, this is also the first. So going to the head-to-head, this is why I would um, uh, support your point here is this is the first one with Dexter as well. So, the, mm. so that additional firepower, which is, you know, Dexter, I, I forget who it was, but somebody um, uh, in the HLA Top 20 said that they see Dexter as a future Top 20. Um, player and I gave that as well to 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 the the editing mm. editing team. This guy was such a good pickup, um, and so I would chuck all of those results um, pretty much out the window. Like you can look to it for you know some of the strats that are being run. I'm sure that you can use it for anti strength purposes. They can. Uh, for us though, uh, I don't see this close to a 50 50 either. That said there is about 10% of value on the mega. So this is one of the ones where I will be on the plus one and a half series um, spread, um, which is uh, you get to win at least one of the first two maps. Um, and it, my only question is whether I add the money line, which is right now at 25%. So, um, and that, and that's just because familiarity, um, both teams in form. I mean, Namiga is what eight and one over the last nine maps or something, eight and two, mm-hmm. sorry. Um, good map pool. Two of the, their top three maps overlap well with uh, Spirit. I'm not saying they're better than the map on that, but I'm saying it might add value for a map handicap. Um, so for me, just based on the pricing, the form, uh, region, um, it's Namiga or Pass. I, I just can't justify, even though Spirits won what 20 of their 25 maps so far in 2021. They, um, they, they were really disappointed about that gambit loss. Um, you could just tell that that, mm. uh, and, and there were prices, you know, of, of 55% favorites. So um, if you look, if you pull away that loss, maybe we're looking, we're talking about spirit in the same context that we're talking about gambit over the last few weeks. So um, no, I, I definitely uh, understand the, the pricing here, um, but it, it, it will be an Amiga or pass for me. Oh, uh, that's uh, in depth actually. But granted, um, you can just blow my argument out of the water for the Amiga. Oh yeah, but, we, but, yeah, we, that's we so frequently see, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, we it's, so it's frequently all... see it. We see yeah. it go that way, where it's like, look yeah. at this informed team coming in, and you know yeah. they're playing against a, another informed favorite, and you're like, mm. okay, the perfect example is Katowice last year, where you got G two yeah. and Navi. You say, well, look, G two is finally clicking. Look how. You know, a year later, they, they, Kenny's gone, and uh, but they, they were absolutely destroyed in that final 3 0. They yeah. got less than eight rounds on every map, but yeah. so um, and they were similarly priced, if I remember. But uh, yeah, no, you're, you're all too right. You can, you can put all the work you want into trying to say there's value to an underdog, and then uh, oh, you know, the favorite gets both pistols, both opening gun rounds, and you know every time their economy's on the brink, they somehow convert, you know, yeah. and uh, that's all it takes to run over an opponent. Yeah. Uh, moving on to our final um, quarterfinal match. And this, in my opinion, is probably going to be the most one-sided between Visa Krakow and Gambit. Um, I think Gambit are just on fire right now. Like I can't really see any world in which Visa Krakow win this. Unless, you know, we see players like Hades just play out of their mind. And the reality is, is will that even be enough? You know, I think um, this is going to be a Gambit kind of oriented series. Um, this is the only one actually that I personally see potentially going 2-0. Um, but yeah, I'll throw it to you guys. What are your thoughts? 
Yeah, for how like how tiny these humans are on Gambit, they are pretty it's pretty incredible. terrifying. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I I they do like there was no luck involved in the rematch versus Navi. Like uh Shiro was the better opper, uh Nafani was yeah. the better caller, they had better rotations, they were more individually skilled, they were not scared, they were prepared, they didn't look like they could lose. They looked smarter, they looked sharper. Mm -hmm. They looked more on the same page um, and they're definitely working harder than a lot of other teams right now. Uh, they, they're like their yeah. practice regimen right now. I mean, they're, they're playing like a tier one, a tier two team in terms of how hungry they are, even though they're getting more and more comfortably tier one. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's their, it's their story to tell, just like you said. I mean, I'm not going to say any of that. Like that's all, everything you guys have said is correct. It, it, there's, there's it's it's only gambit beating themselves here but we do see this happen i mean they lost to copenhagen flames what two, sorry before probably so that was four four or five matches ago um in that same in that same context i guess there an upset is possible here um the other thing is gambit is not two owing teams the way we saw so frequently in the the last sort of four or five months or when they were facing a lot of tier two, three opposition. Um, MIBR, I mean, team one today, that was convincing, 16-5, uh, 65-65. Mm. Uh, but if you look over their, 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 and again, you take it with a grain of salt because some of the opposition is significantly better. Um, but if, if we look at a overpass, a train, an inferno, there is a, 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 a route to stealing a map here. And so I think the, the implied odds of that is like, 47 percent i think you're probably looking at that being value to a gamut 2.0 here um but i am maybe just crazy enough to take wisla on their own map handicap or um series spread so and and just because of those if if, if we see gambit continue to pick overpass for instance their t side has now dropped to under 45 percent Version rate, yeah. yes, against very good teams. But if it's a nine six Whistler, they get a second pistol. Their overpass T side is enough to somehow, you know, sort of fall over themselves over the finish line to get a map. Um, and then if you get to a third map, like this is where those upsets become very, very surreal. Um, and so, in that same sort of context of how did Copenhagen Flames upset Gambit? I just don't see it as um, Gambit is. I mean, I, I told you, I, I think they are the best team. I think they're the front runners to win the tournament. Um, after everything we've seen, they are clearly working harder. Um, that that series with Navi yesterday, I was so impressed with those uh, maps two and three, even map one for a bit. I mean, it wasn't like they, they were severely outperforming. It went to double or triple overtime for the them. So. Yeah, I, I just see, you know, with, with Inferno being Inferno and, and the, the train and overpass that we've seen from Gambit recently against Tier 1 caliber, um, I don't see the 2-0 as surely as maybe I did um, right after the Katowice win. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be exploring the Wizla angle. Wizla? Wizla uh, angle here a little bit to see uh, if there's something there. Um, but yeah, so... I'm not going to say Wizla for the straight upset. I'm going to take the, the ride the fence approach. Um, but I, I'm looking at their side or pass as well here. And, and the reason here, just for people listening, it, it, it's not, if you, if you bet Counter-Strike regularly, you just have to be conscious of the, the win rate you need to back teams like Gambit consistently. I mean, they, they have an excellent win rate. Um, and you say maybe against tier two caliber, it is in that 70 to 85 80 percent but i think if looking at the odds they are what 80 plus percent here i, I don't have mm. the, the numbers in front of me so you you they need to keep up that your um pristine counter strike that they've been playing in order for this number to have value that's that's really important. yeah the overpass is an interesting map uh, they there is mm. um so yeah the only thing that's tricky is just that they're like their most recent win they get the overpass over nabi um mm. and i mean you know simple has a horrible series which is yeah it just right. doesn't happen very often so but 
you know, is it because is it because of them that Simple has a horrible series, or is it like he said because of you know his health issues or what, whatever he cited, which uh, we're not exactly sure about um, in terms of what what those would be. So that's the hard part because I know Gambit do come prepared. I really don't feel like they're scared of Simple. I think Shiro believes in himself, and he went. What was it 16 and six in duels versus simple yeah so, i saw yeah. that someone tweeted that out and i was just like That's... i got health issues <laughs> <laughs> you know like yeah, yeah. Was... <laughs> that, that explains it yeah heroes all the way up my ass i got huge health <laughs> um but yeah That's i so i did so i, I wisla are yeah i think i i i really like wisla i really i really like wisla i think they're great um they, but uh um, so, sorry sorry yeah, but but with this overpass thing, they they've gone back and forth on overpass. Damn, it's overpass. Maybe it's improving as well. Yeah. So and then still like we're like, do you see a two one being possible for Wizla, or just that overpass upset? It, it depends where like, if if I'm Gambit, I stay away from picking an overpass or going have an inferno decider. If I'm looking at Wizla's map pool, um, I you're the deeper team. You're the more talented team. Pick something that, even though these are good maps for you against most opponents, um, those are the maps that I would say Wizla has the greatest chance for an upset because that of their own comfort level. And so on the overpass note specifically, I always get a bit worried when I see um, too much of the default on overpass and let's just lurk, see where there's an opening, see if we can get somebody up long. Sort of, I, I just, I find it looks... Um, or, or just let's you know go go sewers rushing uh, flash through smoke. Um, when, when I see those two types of strats come up in too many rounds, and you're you're you have no, it's clear that you have no go-to way to get up through bathrooms or or way to to get a pick through connector. Um, when, when it's clear that you just don't have the depth on it, or you're not running those those I guess variety, I get very concerned about. How legitimate if, like I, I don't like seeing cloud nine yesterday for instance where mm. i don't know if you've caught how their overpasses looked over the last three matches they're relying on their ct side way too heavily um mm. and i was talking with a buddy of mine and, and we just the certain meme here we go again because you know they're, they're relying on breaking winning the second pistol breaking that round two and marching a 12 round ct side and that's their map pick. And you say that's their best map, you know, highest win rate. And so the, the win rate and the pick can be deceiving. You know, Cloud9, I thought they played much better um, on some other maps against Team 1. Um, but, yeah, it, it just, again, I, I'm trying to find a, a path to not taking the 80% chalky favorite. Um, and that's sort of why we discussed the, the Wizla option it's, it's not because they're they're th those three maps overpass of train inferno are better than games by any, by any definition yeah so right so that has because um i just ran the calculation for as well the average age of gambit is like 20 like this is a I young think it's team as well. yeah uh, it's like yeah. 20.8 so yeah. they are young <laughs> they're flary and i think what you see a lot of the time is um when you see kind of outbreaks of, kind of young players who come into the scene they're you know, they're talented they're fiery they're you know, hungry for victories they have this very aim heavy fast play style which can be really really good as like a surprise factor but it's as they kind of mature as they develop in a team that's when you see the patience coming you see the tactics kind of start bolstering it and rather than you know, taking away from that fast play style it finds a way to regiment it and it finds a way to channel it rather than kind of just yeah, running wild and i think that while that overpass may look good in aim but bad in tact strategy now i think that it's a much easier to work from that basis than it is to go onto a map they just don't know and um i think that while they may struggle on overpass uh kind of within the next couple of yeah, months maybe even weeks i think that once after this bit of time once they've had a bit bit longer to kind of mold they're going to be a force to be reckoned with yeah, another, and, and, another and again, major. They're gonna, it's going to be Navi zero majors, Gambit two majors. Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Can and, you and that. imagine that? Oh my Hobbit goodness. I, I might, might just have to make that HLTV name right now. While there we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. that, that, is, that would be something, though, wouldn't it? I, I don't know. If you're simple, you're just like, time for Valorant or 
<laughs> so good. That, oh man, it, it, it's exciting having, um, we, and we did talk about this uh, on the previous one a little bit, but it's exciting having this CIS region that isn't just a, a no-name group of one random team that sort of goes on a run and then disappears until the next major. It, it would be nice to have three or four teams beyond Navi um, who is part of the, the the circuit in 2021 leading up to the major. And you say, hey, you know, maybe maybe NA isn't the, the powerhouse it was, or we don't have a team liquid that, you know, is going to run over everybody for six months. But we now have three viable regions that that has that can contend for semifinals for sure. So mm. that's a really cool, mm. cool win. Absolutely right. And on the topic of um, you know, what we were earlier mentioning, simple, are there any players you guys really want to keep an eye out for in these quarterfinals on, I don't know, any team, just someone who has that kind of X factor that you're looking forward to seeing? Flamesy, baby. Flamesy. Flamesy. He, he's he's <laughs> said it last week. He's still yeah. here. Yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, he's super. I mean, he just, I say it again, he just plays with so much kind mm. of like in kind of maturity, it feels like for somebody who doesn't seem to have that like level of accreditation. When I see him play, I'm like, this is like, tier one level like this is going to be viable you're you're not scared he's got great aim um he's only 17 as well yeah super yeah that's that's the thing like he's 17 Mm -hmm. and he plays like he's like he's like 24 years old with like i wish feel old doesn't it it's kind of nuts see it's 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 very impressive so much so much road to show and uh i think it's i think it's going to keep up and um yeah so he's definitely my number one pick any anybody here maybe axile as well if i could pick two Oh yeah. Um, he was a monster versus team one and he averaged 24 mm-hmm. kills. He had 22, 24, and 26 kills in the three maps versus Navi as well. What? That's insane. Yeah. Adam, you got I, a place to watch out for? I, I was so disappointed just on the Navi note for a second. I, I was so mm-hmm. disappointed to see. I think it was their match. Who did they get um they got to Furia and it was electronic. No, who was it? Three of their players, Perfecto, Flamey, and Boomich, they had under 10 kills through a half from half. And I was thinking to myself, <laughs> how is it still happening through... We remember saying that about, you know, um, Seas and Edward and Zeus and these other guys, you know, Flamey's been all through all of them, you know, somehow. Good good for him. Sometimes he has these fantastic performances and you know i'm sure he's a good teammate for all for all the right reasons um and you brought in perfecto you've got, got electronic this is you've got a fragging igl right or at least to to most people's standards uh maybe not to exceptional standards like we've seen some guys um but you've got so much firepower how does this still happen with the frequency it does and yeah simple is sometimes gonna have maps where he takes over but when you're losing and you can't find anyone on your team who can, mm. you know, trade effectively and, and you're playing Mirage and you're a 1.3 favorite against Furia, I, I just, I, it probably doesn't happen nearly as often anymore as it did back, back then. And I'm sure that's very obvious, but it still happens with enough frequency that you sort of, sort of face palm when you hear about it. And so I just said to make that note. I don't know how yeah. to today, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. yeah and for, i think uh you know they have a very top top heavy style of cs they have two top five players on their team simple and electronic electronic had one really bad series recent i mean sorry simple had one really bad series recently outside of that he can regularly take over games right like he's it's not like yeah. he it's not even like he can just be there sometimes he like right he's almost every single game uh like the sole reason navi will like crush yeah. a team or do well versus a team like they, and they set, and, and I think it makes sense to set up your talent in that way. You've got the best player, and you've got you know a top five player right beside him, um, and he's doing really well. But it almost always feels like there's one or two trades that like Flamey or Boomich can't get sometimes, and you're like, yeah, why does yeah, that yeah, seem to consistently it. happen? Where they're just like, just a touch under their like their level. Are they? paying too much attention to the radar, they feel uncomfortable or they're just having a bad day emotionally. Because I, mm. I know this is a team that fights a lot. Um, I don't know. And I know yeah. I know it's a team that does that does have like some imbalances in the power structure, you know, simple boomage um, and blade, for example. They've all got this like kind of a spotty history. 
And when they're, when Boomich is calling well, you can see it. He's also usually playing well. And, uh, you know, blame chimes in every once in a while. And then Simple is consistently putting performances. Everything looks great. But there are, so, it feels like so many days where there's just too much volatility. And one of the only things that's consistent is Simple. And then, you know, usually electronic overall. But outside of that, there's, it's always a killer. You're like, why, why couldn't you just spray better there? Like what happened? Yeah. <laughs> I could make that kill, right? That's what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the lie you tell yourself, you know, I would have got that. Yeah. Of course, um, on the top. So, Sorry. Just gonna, I was just gonna say my actual, just quickly, Krem, my, my actual two players that I'm going to watch for mm. um, X7 and Tabson. Yeah. Um, mm. X7, new roster, new life. You know, we've seen him excel at the, the, you know, the major stage. Um, I love seeing him playing with a bit of edge and a little bit more, you know, I've, I'm going to take the fight to you. Um, that we sort of see, it, it's good just to see that, that life in him, I guess. Um, and he's been posting excellent numbers, um, again. Um, so him and then Tapson, um, Tapson, I just going back to what the NRG days when he was with NA, you saw this sort of superstar guy that he takes over the IGL when God B retires Good for him. I would just love to see him, um, you know, just get to that, like, consistently, like, everybody knows their jobs. I don't need to micromanage the team. Um, I, I can worry about my own firepower. And, you know, I, I'd love to see him carry big to, to a title here. Um, so those are those are my two, just a little bit more veteran players that, um, that sort of need some confidence and just uh, go on a little bit of a run here. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I think my personal one would be Dexter. I think that even though he's kind of already shown himself, I still just want to see him play. Like the guy's really just been unreal recently. Um, but to quickly run through it because I'm very conscious of time and I can hear our producer sort of sweating on the other <laughs> side of that mic. But um, of course, who do you guys see going to the end of the tournament? Who do you see taking a victory for the whole of the Pinnacle Cup? Personally, uh, as much as it pains me to say it, I think it would be somewhere along the lines of either Big or Nip. Um, Gambit, I think, are definitely favourites to do so. I just personally, I think I want to see a bit of an upset. I want to see a kind of new team that, well, not new team, but a team other than Gambit kind of rise up and kind of show that they can still win because who doesn't have a good upset, you know? But how about Adam? What do you guys think of this? It feels uncomfortable to, it almost feels uncomfortable to pick Gambit because it just like, yeah. it feels like you, everything lines up, but it just might not work out. But yeah. Have some you know, fuck damn it. it. Fuck yeah. it. He's, they're going to 2-0 their next three games. I think uh, Gambit are going to going to win. They're going to shred. They're going to shred this bracket. I'm, yeah, I'm going to pick big to upset in the final. Upset. All right. You know, All like right. they're 1.3. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't even know who it is. No, they, they will be. If they face Gambit or Spirit, they will be the underdog. Um, so... Um, and, and that's that's what's so cool. You know, you've got the, the NIP, uh, the Swedes and the Germans on the top half uh, of the bracket. Yep. Um, you know, then you've got the two CIS squads uh, on, on the bottom half. You know, I mean, I, again, there's the better in me and then there's the CS fan. So CS fan, I would love to see all four favorites here move on because I just think they it sets up for really amazing semifinals and finals. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure... It, no matter who progresses, it'll be amazing. Some of the final, but you know, you just you want to see how it plays out, kind of like seeing a gambit versus a Navi. Um, so, but I I'm going to say if Big gets past Endpoint, it's because they you know they've come in prepared. Um, because I don't think Endpoint's a team they brush you brush off. They come in prepared to that. They so provided Big beats Endpoint, I pick them for the upset against Gambit or Spirit in the finals. All right, all right. Uh, I'm pretty sure that that's all we really have time for. It's actually just occurred to me, Adam. I've been trying to rack my brain for it at the last hour. You look like the Green Giant advert, and you look like the giant in that. That yeah, was well, this segment sponsored by them. Crap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feels Green Giant sweet cool. Check them uh, out. Apologies yeah. to to anybody that does happen to see the video. Um, maybe we'll just put a <laughs> face taps his face over my face or something for for the video everybody thank you all for listening we'll be back in a short while to bring you the next installment of the Charles to be champion pinnacle cup podcast for now though if you have any questions for myself or any of my other wonderful co-hosts then have a head over to our twitter channel pinnacle esports should just be at pinnacle esports one word and drop us a message and we'll make sure to answer as many as we can for the next pod because thank you all so much for watching we'll see you all in the next one bye bye